Sabrina, it's been a couple weeks since I last seen you, and here we are at this point. We're talking about the Trayvon Martin story. It's an incredible docu-series that we have been watching. It's six parts to it. Rest in power, the Trayvon Martin story. So now, episode one, episode two has aired. Are you watching this in real time with everybody else? Um, I actually watched it already. Yeah. Um, I did watch the first episode with my 15-year-old um, nephew, Kimani, um, and that's only because he knew Trayvon. Um, we were together, and I wanted to answer any questions that he had. His mom is a teacher, so she's fully able, you know, she's she has the ability ex to explain to him sure. um, what was going on and if he had any questions. But I just wanted to be with him, and I just wanted to, uh, you know, see if he had any questions, see his reaction, and, you know, things like that. And so, you know, we, we watched it together. Um, we chatted a little bit. Um, he didn't have very many questions right. um, because he said that he understood. Mm. How has been the feedback so far? Because I've been hearing, you know, it's it's very well put together. It's very sad, though. Um, the feedback for me, one of the things is they ask all the time is um, how was I able to, like, express myself and communicate and talk and tell people um how i felt going through the the uh trial and going through you know just the journey that, that i went through so with, much. with with the tragedy of losing trayvon but i think what um the directors have done is um they scheduled days for us to like uh speak just to just to pour into the film and i think the you know when it was our bad days and it was days that i wasn't able to speak they would reschedule so they really wow. got me at some times when i wanted to talk I, I had things to say i wanted to express myself i wanted people to know what happened with trayvon so that we can prevent it i just i just didn't want to just open up my heart and my life just because that, that's that's nothing for me there was no reason for me to do that but it was done in hopes that it would save another Trayvon Martin mm -hmm. it would save another person's son another person's child because my son is gone yeah you know and so now the fight is for other people's children for other kids and so um I wanted to talk about what I went through I wanted people to see and attach a person yes. what what happened I wanted them to see who Trayvon Martin's mother was yeah. I wanted them to to know that I, I'm just an average mom he was an average teenager and I wanted them to know these things and and so that's why uh, a lot of people now are talking about the movie but they don't know how important a documentary is because it's Tracy and myself expressing ourselves as parents how has been other parents reactions like do you feel that there's been enough change since Trayvon's passing no I don't think it's um been nearly enough change I think that for the most part uh the conversation is on the table I think right. a lot of people are having forums and they're talking about uh stand your ground they're talking about uh registering to vote and all those things they're talking about racial profiling they're talking about these things where before we wasn't even talking right. about them so that is a step towards uh progress just to know that we are discussing these things now the other thing is now we have to move to action yes. um we can only talk so much now that there has to be action and that action comes in the form of you know making positive change and trying to do something about it yeah why do you think this case touched so many people's lives I can certainly say that the people that support us the reason why this wasn't the first time that an african-american right. um, young man had been shot and killed and nobody was held accountable um this is not the first time and so uh i think what happened was people were just sick and tired of it continuing to right. happen and um it was the young people I think it was sure. absolutely, absolutely it was the young people who decided that they wanted to do something about it. It was the young people who created the Million Hoodie Rally. It was the young people who uh, started putting the hoodies on and started posting pictures and sharing the news story and things like that. It was the young people. And so I think that's 
the key is the young people are going to be the ones that actually change this whole uh, narrative about what happens when an African-American is shot by another group. Right. You, you know, not necessarily white, but it could be uh, another group. But it seems like there is a process for black on black crime. And there's a process when an African-American or uh, uh, somebody's brown and black gets shot down. Um, there is a process or none. You know, right. and so um, we we have to all fight. We have to all continue to fight. Um, you asked the question about um, parents and how right. parents feel. One of the things um, this docu series speaks to is not only parents that have lost a child through senseless gun violence, like myself, but it also speaks to parents who have lost a child through uh, a sickness, a car accident. Mm -hmm. Um, suicide. It yeah. speaks to those parents because those parents know the pain that I suffer. Those parents know mm -hmm. the pain that Tracy suffers. Those parents know that there is a loss that cannot be replaced. It doesn't matter how many kids you have. People, you know, oftentimes ask, well, do you have other kids? It doesn't matter. Right. You know, it doesn't matter how many kids. You're still going to feel the loss yes. of that one that's missing. And so it seems like you you know, I go through my life and I'm missing something. It, it feels like I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. And that missing piece to the, my, my heart, of course, is Trayvon. Mm -hmm. And so um, the docuseries speaks to those parents. Now, you guys decided to work with Jay-Z on the docuseries. Have you heard from him and his feedback since it aired? Um, we have. Um, he's satisfied. He's very satisfied. Um, I tell people all the time it's very hard to watch. It is it's, it's very it's very intense, it's very deep, but it's very real. And so yes. a lot of people have a problem with um, viewing because it's so emotional. It's so it brings out so many feelings. It brings out disappointment and sadness and yes. anger. And you know sometimes it brings out tears. And um, people kind of go through all of these different emotions and they don't want to experience that. But I'd rather for you to experience it through somebody else's eyes, mm -hmm. which I have gone through it. So experience it through my eyes and 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 make sure that compels you to want to make change. I don't know how you do it. How do you do it? How do you deal with this? I just, I mean, I'm sure you didn't expect this was where your life was going to go, right? Where you're going to be here being the voice of the voiceless and trying to find ways to make this world a better place. How do you take care of yourself? Um, I'm big on self-care. Okay. Um, I just surround myself with positive people. My oldest son, Javaris, mm -hmm. is here. Um, I brought one of my line sisters here with yeah. me. Um, of course, this year I pledged Delta Sigma Theta because I wanted to connect with an organization of women that were that had the same focus in mind, that had the same goals in mind, strong, educated women that were serving their community. And so I connected with uh, Delta, mm -hmm. and um, I pledged. Mm -hmm. I was online. I did the, the did whole night. I did the whole nine <laughs> yards and I'm proud to say that I can actually wear the letters, but I needed that support as well. I, I um, you know, what a part of my grieving process was to help other mothers. And, right. and I feel like that um, took some of the tension off what I was going through. But by the same token, um, I feel like it's through my deltas that it puts that that lost fuel back. It helps. uh um, revitalize me and it helps me to continue to move forward because I have all of those sisters yeah. that help lift me up. I have my family to lift me up. I have my church family mm -hmm. to lift me up. I have my friends to lift me up. And then I have all the people that I don't know that's continuing to support us, that's continuing to pray for us, that continues to stand with us. Um, they support the foundation. Yeah. They're, you know, it, it's, it just... You know, it helps. It helps me. It does help me to know that I'm not going through this alone. For sure. And you know what? The last time we met, it was at MTV for TRL and Colin, Colin Kaepernick. He came to see you and came to see Tracy. And um, when he posted a picture of you all together, he said that he met two of his heroes. And, you know, I just. When I read that, I got emotional, not because he's just my partner, right? But because he looks at you and Tracy as heroes, you know, and I'm sure you know this, but you are, you, you guys are heroes to so many of us. I mean, do you take time to take that in and realize well, 
Um, that you guys what I, are amazing. What I was saying about self care, I do need that time. Like right now, I need a vacation, you yes. know. But I do need that time um, to myself. So I take that time. I I need to like um, just go to an island or somewhere yes. and sit on the beach with a margarita and just look at the water move. Just yes. ab- do absolutely nothing. I need that time. And so um, when the docu series um, finish finish airing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I will have that time, but in the between times, um, I spend time with family. Okay. I, um, you know, I try to go to a few comedy shows when I can. Yeah. I'm, I, I really like, um, you know, listening to the comedians. Um, I'm a spa girl. Um, uh-huh. I, I love going to the spa, and so oh yeah, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, you know, I try to do those things in between um, my busy schedule because I do have a very hectic schedule. But I try to do those things to kind of put back into Sabrina, you know, yes. where everybody is pulling me in so many directions. I got to make sure I keep myself together. Um, I'm here in New York a lot because yes. my son is here. And so um, I like, I enjoy spending time with him. I just, you know, even if we just go for dinner, you know, it yeah. just, it just warms my heart. And so, um, <sighs> yeah. Uh, what, um, uh, about being a hero, I mean, I just feel like, um, to me, it just feel like I'm just doing what any mother would have done. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. You're going to try to protect your own. And when you can't, you're going to fight for the protection of. And so I think it's just out of instinct. I think I didn't try to figure out what was going on. I just did what I, what came natural. Right. And that's what um, I feel like anybody would do is like speak up for my son who's not here yeah when we because you know ever since Trayvon Martin's passing it's not the first time right we've seen Eric Garner we've seen Philando Castile Alton Sterling I mean the list goes on and on every time you hear of a tragedy like that happen does it bring back the pain and do you feel that you're reliving it again um or are you just like, I need to be there for this family right now? I I, I just left uh, Clearwater on mm-hmm. Sunday, and um, I was okay when I went there. But when I met with the family, Tracy and I, mm-hmm. uh, Reverend Sharpton did a rally there mm-hmm. in Clearwater, again, about stand your ground. Um, just seeing the family yeah. um, bothered me a great deal, just knowing that what I went through six years ago, they're going through now. And... Um, my heart really went out to them and you know every mother know their child and so when i got up to speak and my mom heard me she says are you okay Mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah i was just like you know so full you know it was just so disappointing to know that what i went through they're getting ready to go through so i try to give you know the mothers i try to give the family the best advice i can um, but it's, it's no easy road. It's, it, you know, somebody could tell you what they went through, but it's no easy road. It's going to hurt and it's going to hurt a great deal. Um, but one of the things I try to, you know, tell them is to surround yourself with positive people. Is there a certain memory of Trayvon that you replay in your mind over and over that brings joy and happiness um, to, to deal, to cope? Is there anything for you if i had to single out anything it, it would be like when i came home from work he would be at the door he would be at the window he always knew when i pulled <laughs> up he listened to the car um i came home always at a certain time and so um that's a memory i have for for of him yeah. um and you know i it just makes me smile a lot of people be like you know how do you smile but um I, I just smile thinking about him. I know he's in heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he's looking down. I know he's proud. I know he's cheering for him. Yes. I know he's saying, Ma, you know, he's just, <laughs> you know, happy with the situation um, that we're doing on his behalf. And so um, I, I I just think about him all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else are you working on? Because, of course, we know that you're going to keep this movement going and you're going to continue to speak for the voiceless and you're going to continue to make sure that we all remember Trayvon for who he is, an amazing young man that he was, a young child. What else is Sabrina working on? And I know it's tough, but I sometimes I feel that people need to know that you're a businesswoman. You're also 
learning how to bring this all together in different avenues. What are you working on right well, now? Well, one of the things that um, we're working on is um, we're in conversations about uh, bringing um, the rest in power to the silver screen. Nice. Um, we don't have a contract right now, but we in communications and we're going to be meeting very, very soon again about right. it. Um, we just wanted to get the docu-series out the way, you know, so that they can see the parents of that's doing right. the talking. You didn't, re we really didn't want characters or actors to um, speak on our behalf. We wanted to, uh, people to to actually see us and put a name with who Trayvon parents was but that's one thing um, we also um, I'm also working on the foundation um, we have the circle of mothers and circle of fathers where we bring mothers from all over the United States and you know it's about healing and bonding and all of those things we we um, we cry, but we also laugh. So mm -hmm. I have a comedian to come in and, oh, you know, I, I bring a, a psychologist in and, you know, just to kind of, you know, talk them through what they're going to be going through with the grieving process. Um, they get their hair and makeup done. It's, you know, it's just a full weekend um, that, that we do. It's the Circle of Mothers. Yeah. And so um, in February, on February 5th was Trayvon's birthday. So every year around that time, we celebrate his birth and not his death. And um, we have what we call as the peace walk mm -hmm. and the peace talk. Um, because Trayvon was simply trying to walk in peace. And we want our young people to know, we want the world to know that they have a right to walk in peace without being followed, chased, pursued, yes. profiled, or murdered. And so at the end of the peace walk, we have like uh, our political uh, uh, representatives to come out. We have the police department to come out because we want to bridge the gap between our young people and law enforcement. We have entertainment, we have singers, we have dancers, and you know, it's just a community event that we do um, every year around Trayvon's birthday. And so this year, Jay-Z actually came out to that event and we're always open to, you know, have additional guests to yeah. come out. Serena, I can't thank you enough for always smiling and being strong, especially when it's the hardest conversation of your life. But you give me so much inspiration. You give so many of us life. And just like Colin said, you are a hero to so many of us. And it also puts pressure on all of us that we have so much work that needs to get done. And we, we do need your help. And... Thank you for sharing everything with us when you didn't have to, honestly. Like you just, when I, like I talked to my mom about it, she's like, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could share that because it's so personal, so real. And I I don't think I could ever say thank you enough to you. Thank you. I, I just, I just can't. And you know, this is anytime you're in New York and you need to come through and you need to talk, you got another project. We have to keep going. We have to stay strong. And I believe that everyone has some type of platform that they could use so that we can continue this conversation, but now go to action. What do we have to do so we can see real change? So we don't see this happen anymore. And I don't know if we'll ever see it in our lifetime, but we're going to keep trying because what else are we going to do? Right. I, um, I usually give people a few things that they can do. They can connect themselves with a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. um, that has the same goals in mind. Um, it could be the National Action Network. It could be the NAACP, the Urban League. It could be any organization that's a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And what they want to do is they want to give their time and their talent. They can go to the Trayvon Martin Foundation yes. at TrayvonMartinFoundation.org, and they can see some of the things that we're doing Um um, in our community and across the world, um, they can also make sure that they register to vote yeah. and that they're registering other people. Make sure your circle is registered to vote. Make right. sure your friends, your family, your church family are registered to vote. Make sure um, people are acting, um, responding to their jury duty summons. Right. A lot of people try to get out of that, but that was a your problem voice, for us. Your action yes that was a problem for us with jury duty so they need to go to jury duty because you might be the the voice they need to help somebody else's son and so um mm -hmm. not only knowing who's on the ballot and what's on the ballot but you got to get out and vote and so those are just some of the more important things they need to get rid of the stand your ground law or yes. repeal the stand your ground law because it's not applied equally to all races yes um 
the justice system needs to be uh, reformed. The police department, there are some issues with law enforcement right. as well. You know, nobody is saying all police are bad, but by the same token, I don't see a uh, black officer shooting and killing um, white mm -hmm. people and, and, and walking away and going home and getting in and, and not held accountable. Absolutely. And nobody's not. And that's the part that's upsetting is that nobody's being held accountable for their actions here. And, don't get me started on the system and police because, you know, I don't believe in the whole system at all. But that's just a that's a different conversation, different day where I hope that we can all have a real conversation with the people that seem to be in control of everything. Right. Because, like you said, it's uh, people. Colin really said it best. You know, people are getting away with murder. There's no accountability. And so what does this mean? Where, where do we go? Well, we, we live in a country now that has a law that allows you to get away with murder. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just very clear what happened in Clearwater with somebody being shot and killed. I mean, some of these situations don't actually have to happen, you know, right. um, where you are not actually fearing for your life, you know. Right. And so... Um, I don't want to talk too much in detail right. about my case because, um, or my son's case, because I want really, I want people to watch the Please documentary. Please watch it because it's all in the docu series. You see it, the depositions, the case, everything, which is why it's so important. Everything that you heard Sabrina say right now is so important. Know the ballot, know who's on there, know what they represent, and be pick who you feel is going to represent you and speaks your voice. You know, because that's important. Oh, Sabrina, this is it's a good docu-series, but make sure you have Kleenex with you because when I watch it, I was a mess still even thinking about it right now. It's a, it's a lot to take in. And Sabrina, thank you so much for stopping by, talking with us, and thank sharing you. your and life. Thank you. And let Colin know that he's our hero as well. <laughs>